Creating animations in motion page is a straightforward and fun process. However, the tool is very powerful and can offer much more than a simple animation. A basic understanding of CSS is recommended, but once you get a grasp of it, you will see how easy and fast it is. In this lesson, we will explain the UI, the process behind creating an animation, and the different options that motion page has to offer. When you open the builder, you already have everything set up for a new timeline, so you can start right away. Let's build a simple fitting animation. The first step is name your animation or keep the generated name. Keep the pitch load trigger, which is set as default. Continue to select the element for your animation. Click the selector scanner and click on any element you find its selectors. It is recommended you use a unique selector as an ID or a class that is not used on other elements. In the From tab, open Opacity and change it to zero. Now your first animation is ready. Click the play button. You've just created a simple fitting animation in five clicks. You can keep adding various properties and experiment with the animation like scale and translate. Basic settings. At the top of the builder, you can set some basics to your newly created timeline. In the first row, you can rename the timeline as it appears in the library or duplicate or create a new one. In the second row, you set a page where you want to have your animation. If you want it to load on all the pages instead, click the global icon on the right. Triggers. The trigger you select in this section will be applied to the entire timeline. You can choose from page event, which has page load or page exit. Scroll trigger interaction, which is click and hover. Each trigger may have its own sub settings, especially the scroll trigger, which we will cover in much more detail in the next lesson. Animation. All right, this is the fun part. This pane controls properties to animate for a single animation in your timeline. Start with the animation selector. If you know the selector you want to animate, write it into the input and confirm by pressing enter or use the selector scanner to pick the right selector directly from your page. Activate it by clicking the icon at the right side of the input. You can add one or multiple selectors in a single animation. Decide if you want to animate from or to or both and start adding properties that are going to be animated. So when do you use from, to or both? Use from to change only the starting value and it will automatically animate to its default state, just like we have here in our example. This means that if your animation contains opacity 0 in the from tab, it will animate from opacity 0 to 1 and you don't have to add a value of 1 in the to tab. Use the to if you want the animation to start from its default to your selected property and use both if you need to set specific values on both sides. Enabled breakpoints. You can run the animation only on specific range of breakpoints. This applies to the entire timeline. You can run only on the desktop. You can run only on mobile. The timeline and player. Since the start, you have one animation in your timeline but you can add as many as you want. Click the plus icon at the top left of the timeline to add another animation. Switch between animations easily by clicking them, so it refreshes the animation panel with your properties. Right click the animation to show the context menu where you can delete or duplicate the animation. Live mode. In scroll trigger and interactions, you have the options to switch on live mode. Live mode runs the preview directly by interacting with the iframes, scrolling, clicking, hovering, while the player mode controls the animation using our play, pause, rewind, and loop controls. All animations you create and save are stored in the library, categorized into folder by page where they were created. On the right hand side of the animation, you can see and control if the animation is hidden, so it does not load on the front end, but is available in the library, or global, so it loads on all pages. Edit the animation by clicking it or access more option using the right click. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at an overview of all the animation properties.